welcome to Advent. Can you believe it's Advent already? Well, this morning we are going to find ourselves way back in the beginning in the book of Genesis, and so I'd like to invite you at this time to turn in your Bibles or the devices you have at home to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to be looking at the first five verses of Genesis chapter 1, and this morning we are honored to have Randy and Lisa Poole, who will be our scripture readers this morning, and so let's stand together in honor of God's Word as we listen to Genesis 1, 1 through 5. Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. You may be Genesis. seated at this time. In the beginning, the beginning began with darkness. Uh, take a look with me at verse 2 if you still have your Bibles open. It says this, The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Uh, isn't darkness overwhelming at times? Isn't this why little children use night lights at home? I mean, you can raise your hand at home if you used a night light yourself even when you were younger. Uh, there are even some adults today who use night lights, whether it be a sound machine next to them or whatever it is, because the darkness is so overwhelming. Did you know that they actually make adult night lights as well too? I mean, imagine waking up in the middle of the night to an elephant turning in circles next to your bed. Or maybe even it looks like Bruce, doesn't it? The shark from a movie maybe you've seen before. But imagine waking up and seeing these night lights in your bedroom. Have you ever played hide and seek? Well, at a previous church that I worked at where I was a pastor, we would go into the educational wing of the church. And the church, it was Orland Park Christian Reformed Church. And they had this educational wing that was like 20 classrooms. It was 10 on the top layer, and it was 10 on the bottom layer. That's supposed to be an arrow, actually. Instead of it, it just looks like a big block of red. But the top left building was the education building. And Tammy and I and the girls, when they were younger, would go up in that building and we would play hide and seek. And usually Emma would tag team with me and Sydney with mom. And we would go in that building with two flashlights, one per team. We would hide in those rooms and you couldn't see anything at night. But oftentimes your flashlight would die in the middle of the game. And the darkness was just so overwhelming that you couldn't see anything. Have you ever been in complete darkness? Somewhere where it was so dark that you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. How did it feel? Was it overwhelming? Was, was it heavy? And yet it, it amazes me that the smallest of lights can break through the darkness and dispel that darkness. There's a story that came out a year or two after September 11th in 2001, where a couple of people were, were buried and they were in the darkness and they couldn't find their way out because it was so dark. And after a few hours, they heard a voice saying, follow me. And there was a small light that they could see. And what they found out afterwards and coming out of the darkness was that it was a man's watch light that they were following. The smallest of light can break through the darkness and lead one into the light. So the Bible says that things began with the dark, but then God creates light. And look at verse 3. It says this, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. How did God do this? Have you ever been in the woods and you needed to create light and you needed to create a fire and so you found some sticks and some twigs and brush and maybe you had some rocks and you were able to create light? God created light with only one thing and he creates it with his voice. He simply says, let there be light and light burst forth through the darkness. Ten times in Genesis chapter 1, God says, let there be, he, he utters, let there be, and ten times we see the result, and it was so. Just by his voice alone. 
One scholar says that which God plans and that which God commands always comes to pass. Which he plans and commands always comes to be. You know, I wish I had that power that God had when I was playing hide and seek. That in that darkness in that day, I could just say, let there be light and everything is revealed and all of my friends who are hiding are just completely exposed and you can totally see them. Can you imagine camping and not having a light and just saying, let there be light and all of a sudden there's a campfire. When's the last time you were amazed by God's mighty power in creating light out of nothing? When was the last time you were impressed by the light? When was the last time you thanked God for light? Did you thank him for light this morning? I think God was impressed by the light himself. I think he himself was impressed by the light because verse 4 says this. It says, and God saw that the light was good. He never calls darkness good, but he calls light good. Now, the Hebrew word for good also conveys the sense of beautiful. And he saw the light and said, it is beautiful. One scholar has this to add. It is as though God comp con contemplated, excuse me, it's as though God contemplated the exquisite beauty of light separating from darkness and the grandeur, color, and perfection of detail of this world that he in his wisdom had created. He experienced an emotion of profound satisfaction and delight that we who are made in his image share in when we delight in the world of nature that he has made for us. Have you ever seen a good light? Have you ever seen a light and maybe just said, that is, that is so good? Here's a couple pictures of the sunrise in Israel that I look at and just say, that's just so good. Look at the beauty of what God has created each morning as he reminds us that he created this light for us. You see, by separating the light from the dark, by calling every day light, and by returning the light to us each morning, every 24 hours, we get to engage in the beauty of God's creative act of giving us light. Here's a sunrise in Marquette, Michigan. Who wouldn't want to stand there right now and exclaim how good God is and how good his light is? And I know this is the sunset, it's not the sunrise, but I couldn't not have the sun setting in Grand Haven, Michigan. How many times this year have you found yourself watching the sun rise or set and said, God, he is so good that he gives us his light each and every day. Quick little side note, I don't know if you've thought about this before, but God created the light on which day? On day one. But when did he create the sun? On day four. How is that possible? Have you ever thought about that? Well, scholars say this, gaseous masses, try to say that five times at home quickly if you want to, gaseous masses from which the sun and stars developed had a high temperature and thereby were glowing because of their high temperature. You know, we don't really know how this took place. But what we do know is that God's light dispelled the darkness. It, it hovered over the darkness and it created light and God called it good. So what can light do? Well, a couple quick things, and I'm sure we'll hear more of this in this series. But the light can push out the darkness. It actually removes it and pushes it out. And we see that in Jesus who removes the prince of darkness. Light not only dispels the darkness, it also reveals things. It, it reveals things. Sometimes early in the morning when I like to run outside, can't see anything, and so I wear a little headlamp. Tiny little lamp reveals the whole path and allows me to see sticks and twigs and even a dog a couple weeks ago. But it reveals things just as God's word is a lamp and reveals so his light pushes out the dark, it reveals the light, but his light also provides life because his light was, was fire. And so it allowed to cook, it allowed people to produce and cook food, and it also provides warmth. His light, lastly, also symbolizes God's presence. In the Old Testament, God's people followed a pillar of fire. They heard God's voice in a burning bush. They saw bright lights and, and God revealed himself. You see, light always symbolizes God's presence. 
And that's why the light was lit in the temple all day long to symbolize that God was home and that he was present with his people. I think of the story of Jesus who's on the shore of the Galilee and the disciples roll up on shore and he's already making breakfast for them, which I love that picture. But he's making breakfast and cooking fish over the coal or the fire of a coal, which symbolizes God's presence. We also read in the book of Revelation that when Jesus makes all things new, that there will be no sun in Revelation. There will be no sun in the New Jerusalem because God's son, Jesus, is the sun. Imagine that. We lit Advent candles this morning and we heard the words, this symbolizes that Jesus is with us. The light symbolizes his presence. In the beginning, things began with the darkness, but God creates the light. God gives them light and next... We respond by seeking to hide. Take a look at Adam and Eve again in the creation account. They are caught in disobedience. And what is the first thing they do in Genesis 3 verse 8? Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of day. And they hid from the Lord. So their new posture is no longer joy and freedom. Their new posture is now actually hiding and concealing and trying to, to move away from God. And now before you judge them, we do this too. We hide, we conceal, we do things at night. And, and I fear that in this time of pandemic, it's only getting worse. We're walking further away from others. We're not holding each other accountable. We're not calling each other enough possibly. And with the stressors of life that are taking place, I wonder if we're walking in the darkness in these days Isaiah 29 shares these words for us, if we think we can hide. The prophet Isaiah says, Woe to those who hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in the darkness and think, who will see us and who will know? Woe to those who do things at night and think that God will not see and they think, oh, no one's going to see what takes place. But Job 34 tells us this truth. This is in Job 34 verse 21. It says, his eyes are on the ways of men and women. He sees their every step. There is no dark place. There is no deep shadow where evil doers can hide. There's no place, my friends, where we can hide from him. There is no darkness dark enough where we can remove ourselves from his light and from his presence. And so what is God's response? Take a look at Genesis 3, chapter 3, verse 9. Genesis 3 verse 9 says this, God responds by saying, where are you? Where are you, Adam? Where is your heart? Where are you spiritually in relationship to me? Are you concealing yourself? Are you removing yourself? Are you distant from me? And God says that to each one of us this morning. Where are you, Tim? Where are you, Susan? Ben, where have you gone? Tina, how far are you from me today? Marshall, where is your heart? Why are you hiding yourself from me? For there's nowhere, Psalm 139 reminds us, that you can go from my presence. So where are you, my friends, this morning? And how are you hiding yourself from the Lord? So there's darkness in the beginning. God creates light. Man seeks to hide but in conclusion, the truth is that the darkness cannot overcome the light. Take a look at Genesis, take a look at John, excuse me. Take a look at John 1 verse 5. And this really is our, our theme verse for this series as we travel through Advent together. But John 1 verse 5 says this, The light that shines in the darkness, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. So things may begin with the dark, but with Jesus, they always end with the light. They always end with the light. Now this week, my thoughts, and maybe yours too, have turned to two of our dear sweet members, Gary and Ann Sluice. As we think about these two members who have been part of this church uh, since the beginning, as Ann is a shepherding elder and walks with God's people, as their sweet daughter, Rachel, who at the age of 37, I believe, walked through the valley of the shadow of darkness. 
Her mom, Anne, posted this on Facebook this week. That Jesus died, he rose again, he ascended, he's preparing a place for each of us, and he conquered sin, and he conquered death, and I would add that he conquered the prince of darkness. Things may start with the dark, my friends, but in Jesus Christ, they always end with the light. They always end with the light. I know this from the creation account. Take a moment and turn in your Bibles, if you would. Maybe you don't have your Bibles open. I would go and find your Bible. I would get your device out. I would take a look at this. I want to show you something that I noticed this week. So turn in Genesis chapter 1 with me. And take a look at verse 5. Notice the ending of verse 5. How do I know that things always end in light? Chapter 1, Genesis, verse 5 says this. It says, And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. Okay, move to verse 8. Look at the end. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. Move to verse 13. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. Look at verse 19. And there was evening, and then there was morning, the fourth day. Look at verse 23. And then there was evening, and then there was morning, the fifth day. Then finally, verse 31, and then there was evening, but there, then there was morning, the sixth day. It's so interesting to note in the book of Genesis that although evening precedes the morning, God's light ends the previous reign of darkness. You may be in the darkness right now, my friends, but it doesn't have to stay that way. In Jesus Christ, you can find new life, and the darkness will always end with morning and with light. God's light always ends the darkness. Friends, in Jesus Christ, you may feel as though you are in the dark today. There may be something that you are concealing. There may be something that you're hiding. You may feel as though the dark is overwhelming. But friends, in Jesus Christ, the light is coming. The light in Jesus Christ is coming. For Scripture reminds us the light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. Thanks be to God that he is victorious over the darkness. Let's join together in prayer. And so, Father, we give you thanks that you are victorious over the dark. We thank you, Father, that you, that you provide eternal life and eternal light. Jesus, you call us to walk in that light. We know, Lord, that your life reveals, that your life illuminates, that your light pushes out the darkness. And we know, Father, from Scripture that even the darkness trembles at your name, Father, your name is light. The shadows cannot deny that you dispel the darkness. And your name, Father, cannot be overcome, not even by the darkness. And so help us, Father, to trust in that light today and to live in that light. We love you, Jesus. We pray that you would bring light to our lives today. And we pray this in your name alone and all of God's children say, amen.